And it's therefore time for members' statements. The member from Elgin, Middlesex, London. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, the start of November marks the beginning of Diabetes Awareness Month. Diabetes Awareness Month is an opportunity to learn more about the risk factors for this disease and the impact it has on patients and their families. There are many supports and resources available to families to help manage and prevent the disease. Diabetes affects more than 10 million people across Canada, and if left undiagnosed or untreated, diabetes can lead to many life-threatening complications. In Ontario alone, an estimated 30.1 per cent of the population has either diabetes or pre-diabetes. If untreated, diabetes can cause serious health effects such as heart attacks, nerve damage, strokes, kidney failure, blindness, and infections that can lead to amputations. Speaker, the onset of diabetes and its complications can be prevented or delayed by following a healthy diet, regular physical activity, maintaining a healthy body weight, and avoiding the use of tobacco. The Canadian Diabetes Association has been leading the charge in this important fight against diabetes. Through education and outreach, they've built awareness and informed Canadians of the risk of this disease. And as a former certified diabetes educator, I relied on the CDA numerous times to help improve my patient care. Mm. Speaker, the PC Caucus and our leader, Patrick Brown, would like to thank all the dedicated healthcare professionals that work day in and day out to help diagnose, treat, and prevent chronic diseases like diabetes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Further member statements. The member from Windsor to come see. Speaker, they shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down on the, of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. Those are the four lines in the fourth stanza of the poem for the fallen, written by Robert Lawrence Binion back in 1914. These four lines are repeated at Legion meetings and memorial services, they are perhaps not as famous as those written in 1915 by Major John McRae in his poem in Flanders Fields. His three stanza poem ends with, take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high, if ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders Fields. Speaker, on Saturday morning, I'll be laying a provincial reef at the Cenotaph in Tecumseh. In the afternoon, I'll do the same in East Windsor at the Cenotaph in Riverside. I hope to be out a couple of times next week with my poppy box. I joined Branch 255 of the Royal Canadian Legion 30 years ago to honour my father and his buddies, the men and women who served their country in times of military conflict. To all of our veterans and military pe peacekeepers, I say, Thank you for your service. Indeed, we will remember. Thank you. Further member of statements, the member from Brampton Springdale. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This Saturday, my family and I, along with six across Ontario and Canada and the world, will celebrate Gurnanik Devji's Gurpurb, also known as Gurnanik's Prakash Utsav. And with these celebrations, it's a celebration of the first Sikh Guru's birthday, Guru Nanak Dev Ji. This is one of the most sacred celebrations in the Sikh religion. The festivities in the Sikh religion revolve around the anniversaries of the 10 Sikh Gurus. These Gurus were responsible for shaping the beliefs of Sikhs. Their birthdays, known as Gurpurb, are occasions for celebration and prayer among members of the Sikh faith. Guru Nanak Dev Ji, the founder of Sikhism, was born on November the 4th, 1469, in Tilwandi in Pakistan, which is now known as Nangana Sahib. Two days before the birthday of Guru Nanak Dev Ji, the first of the ten Sikh Gurus, an Akhand a 48-hour non-stop reading of the Holy Book of the Sikhs, Siddhi Guru Granth Sahib Ji, is carried out in Gurdwaras across the world. Gurpur begins early with the singing of the Asa Divar, morning hymns and hymns from the Sikh scriptures. Afterwards, langar or special community lunch is prepared at the Gurdwaras, and the langar along with Kala Prashad is offered to men and women of all communities. In the evening, the Gurdwaras are illuminated and people visit them in large numbers. Guru Nanak Dev Ji preached on the principle of equality. Something coming directly from one of his quotes is, before becoming a Muslim, a Sikh, or a Christian, let's become human. Um, become a human first. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further members of statement, the member from Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke. Thank you, Speaker. Ontarians can be proud of the work that our community living associations do in inspiring possibilities with people who have intellectual disabilities. I have seen firsthand the results of the hard work of so many dedicated people. Recently, community living Upper Ottawa Valley was recognized for their work by being given the International Award of Excellence by the Council on Quality and Leadership. The award was given to them for their work in building an inclusive community. 
They are helping to create more inclusive residential settings, moving away from segregated programming and engaging the community on how to include individuals with intellectual disabilities in workplaces, organizations, and volunteer initiatives in the broader community. It should also be noted that Community Living Upper Ottawa Valley was the first Canadian organization to ever receive this award. In conversation with Executive Director Chris Grayson, it was clear to me that they are not only thrilled to be receiving this award, but are very proud of the cutting-edge, person-centered approach that they have at Community Living Upper Ottawa Valley. As President and CEO of the Council of Quality and Leadership, Mary Kay Rizzolo said, they completely deserve this International Award of Excellence for their innovative work that they are doing and the success that they're having with the people they support. I have every confidence that Community Living Upper Ottawa Valley will continue to be relentless in doing the right things for the right reasons for the people they support. I personally have interacted with their clients, and not only do I congratulate Community Living Upper Ottawa Valley for the work they have done and will continue to do, but also unequivocally state that this recognition was thoroughly deserved. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements. The member from London West. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I rise today as MPP for London West to recognize the amazing determination and advocacy of my constituent, Jessica Ashton, who is with us in the Legislature today and has been fighting for services for her son, Ashton. By the time Ashton was a year and a half, it was clear to Jessica and her husband, Scott, that their son was different. Ashton was referred to a developmental pediatrician, and they waited anxiously for more than a year to get an appointment. Finally, this June, they got a diagnosis. Ashton Ashton has severe autism. After registering for services, Jessica was de devastated to learn that, they were, that there were almost a thousand children ahead of her son on the wait list. It will be at least three years from the time Jessica first suspected autism to Ashton's receiving service, and this is for a child with severe needs. Jessica drafted a petition and in just two months was able to collect almost 6,500 signatures from people in the London area. As Jessica's petition states, early intervention is absolutely critical for children with autism. Each day these children wait for service is a day they will never get back. I am proud to stand with Jessica and all the Londoners who signed her petition to advocate on behalf of Ashton. For every 68 children in Ontario, one will be diagnosed diagnosed with autism. I call on this government to ensure that these kids get the timely access to the, diagnos the diagnostic and therapeutic services they so urgently need. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. For the member's statements, the member from the Public Post Center. Thanks very much, Speaker. Speaker, over the past number of years, I've had the privilege of getting to know and working with our Somali community in Etobicoke. We have worked together on issues such as education, after-school programming, and to help ensure young people can find jobs and achieve their potential. I have attended the annual Somali soccer tournament, and this past July 1st, I celebrated Somalia's Independence Day in Etobicoke with many members of the community, and I still remember the cohesion and the solidarity that the community showed on that particular day. I've also been proud to support the Somali community in their work to build a strong and democratic Somalia. I was proud to celebrate the elections for the Galmudug Interim Administration and the recent successful election and peaceful transition of power to the new Prime Minister of Somalia. Premier Wynne recently announced humanitarian aid to the victims of the famine that's taking place in Somalia, something we can all be very proud of and something that a number of us on this side were advocates for. Two weeks ago, Speaker, tragedy struck Somalia. After a horrendous car bombing attack in Mogadishu, where hundreds were killed and hundreds more were injured. Two weeks ago in the legislature, we held a moment of silence to commemorate the victims. The Somali Canadian community in Etobicoke immediately showed its solidarity and resilience. They organized a fundraiser to support the victims of this, of this bomb. I rise in the legislature today to share with members of our, of our Somali Canadian community that we mourn with them that I stand with them in this difficult time, and that I look forward to working with them, Speaker, in the weeks and months to come to build a stronger community in Etobicoke and to build a stronger Somalia. Somalia Hanolato. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Kitchener, Conestoga. Thank you, Speaker. As we look toward a week of remembrance, I ask all to take a few moments to remember those who battled 100 years ago this week for the fight for Passchendaele. Only months after the birth of a nation at Vimy, Speaker, our 100,000 strong Canadian corps took the in on the entrenched Germans just east of Ypres and again succeeded where Allied forces had repeatedly failed. Despite months of a British offensive in Flanders, 
Passchendaele Ridge remained in German hands when the Canadians were ordered to deliver victory in October 1917. Speaker, initially, Canadian Commander Sir Arthur Currie of Strathroy feared the battle couldn't be won without a terrible expenditure of lives. He, of course, was right. Initially, the Canadians were met with a shell shock scene of rotting bodies, dead soldiers, and horses. Over two weeks, Curry's troops removed the dead and built roads and tram lines while under a barrage of German gunfire. On October 26, they were ready for the first assault. All four divisions of the Canadian Corps took turns in four separate attacks, with gains of only a few hundred metres each day amidst heavy losses. As Private John Sudbury wrote, quote, the enemy and ourselves were in a self-same muck degradation and horror to such a point nobody cared anymore about anything. With their third attack on the ridge November 6, the Canadians succeeded in capturing Passchendaele and its ruins. A fourth assault days later finished the job. By that time, more than 4,000 Canadians were killed and another 12,000 wounded. As we pause to remember the sacrifice and heroism of our men and women in service, I ask that we also reflect on the bravery of our Canadian troops who fought valiantly at Passchendaele 100 years ago this week. Thank you, sir. Thank you. For your member's statements, the member from Mississauga Streetsville. Well, thank you very much, uh, Speaker. Now that our long Canada 150 summer has transitioned to the chilly sting of Ontario autumn winds, we're closing the windows and all breathing the same air. That means it's time for every Ontarian to take the flu shot. The influenza virus can be lethal. The flu shot protects you. You can get a head cold, but that's not the seasonal flu with its weeks-long aches and pains, sneezing and coughing, and feeling like death warmed over week after week. When the H1N1 virus scared people several years ago, they lined up to get the flu shot. Deaths and hospitalizations from flu-related causes fell sharply during the H1N1 scare, proof that the flu shot works. Once the H1N1 scare was over, too many people who should know better stop getting vaccinated each and every year against the seasonal flu. Flu-related deaths and hospitalizations have shot right back up to their historical levels. The flu shot is absolutely free and available from your doctor or at many pharmacies and flu shot clinics. The flu vaccine is made from eggs, and it's made in Canada. It's safe, and it sure beats having the flu. You need the flu shot every year. However and wherever you get it, take the annual flu shot. It matters. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member for Whitby, Oshawa. Thank you, Speaker. And I want to thank the City of Oshawa for donating a plot of land to Trent University Durham campus in my riding. The land will expand, Speaker, the campus and the programs offered at the university. Speaker, Trent University's Durham campus generates $47 million in annual economic activity for the region. And plans for the expansion will provide students with new academic and residential buildings. Also, Speaker, Trent University Durham welcomes an average of 1,000 new students each year and is expecting increases ongoing in enrollment. The expanded availability, Speaker, in academic programming and living spaces will allow students more choice in deciding which program suits them best. Coupled with new experiential learning opportunities, students will gain access to a post-secondary education that will put them on a path to success. This land donation from the City of uh, Oshawa Speaker will keep Durham Region on the path to creating a thriving, knowledge-based economy, building off the success of students for years to come. Speaker, I'd like to commend uh, Mayor John Henry and the members of the uh, Council for the City of Oshawa for their leadership an ongoing commitment to academic success for students in the region of Durham. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. I thank all members uh, for their statements. And